one story is that people are boycotting John Deere because John Deere has been exposed for having these, you know, same like uh, environmental, social governance type policies and are woke. I mean, you just keep seeing that they're woke. The other story that you're going to see in the mainstream media is that farmers are cutting back because they are not bringing in as much money. And we're talking big, big farmers, like soybean farmers and corn farmers, people who are using massive John Deere seeders to seed huge crop fields. They're saying they're looking at their bottom line. Commodity prices are down. They just can't afford to buy more stuff. And that's what John Deere's official statement has been saying. What's really going on here? You be the judge. Let's take a look first at what the mainstream media is going after. This is a story I found. Husband and wife get laid off from John Deere on the same day. I'll say this as a former TV news reporter who worked in local news. What I'm noticing about this issue that is making it a little bit more complicated is that the the story is being covered in a lot of ways in markets that have very young journalists. And a lot of stations have young journalists now because there's been a lot of downsizing of the expensive older journalists. But in these markets, like in Iowa and in Illinois, these are small towns. And some of the journals look like I mean, I barely, did they graduate college? I barely can tell if they, they even, <laughs> they're out of journalism school. And I'm not even saying that like as a hater, like you have to go to journalism mm -hmm. school because I didn't, I didn't study journalism, but you know, they're new to the world. I mean, they're just, they're brand new at thinking through these issues. So, so it's just interesting. But anyway, this, this is kind of the mainstream way of looking at what's happening with John Deere right now. So I'll play you this story. Um, this is from ABC nine. Uh, in Iowa, Bettendorf, Iowa. So, you know, small town. Let's watch what they have to say. Layoffs at Deer have struck the Quad Cities this month. And now hundreds of families are wondering how they'll pay their rent, feed their families, and find new jobs. TV6 Investigates' Matt Christensen visited a home in Bettendorf where the layoffs have one family on the brink. It was hard, hard news. Very, very frustrating news. Um, um, makes you upset to a point. Um, for Matthew Schultz, Deer was a brand about integrity. When I got hired on at Deer, I, I, I was proud. When I got hired on at Deer and I got selected to be an employee of John Deere, I was very proud. Now Schultz feels betrayed. He and his wife were both laid off from Davenport Works on the same day. It was tough. I mean, we kind of already knew it when I had heard it. it I, was, I was on second shift, so the first shift meeting had already happened. So when I got to work at noon that day, people had told me, um, and we, we kind of knew it was happening beforehand, but. Layoffs have been hanging over Deer employees all month long. Deer's laid off 922 people in the Quad Cities in the past four weeks, 134 at Seating and Cylinder, 211 at Davenport Works, 279 at Harvester Works, and 298 at headquarters in Moline. Deer says that sales are down 20% and cuts are required across the globe. Well, I mean, I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I can see the orders are the, the orders are definitely down because um, the numbers within the plant, you know, we're not pumping out what, what we were. It's gone down. They're cutting lines dramatically. I mean, those cuts will be felt outside Deer's plants, too. That's the thing. This community, the Quad Cities, is heavily Deer-based with four plants in the area. So when they take these kind of hits, it's doesn't just affect deer, it affects a lot of people. So, okay, as you heard him saying in the report, basically sales are down 20%, that's what John Deere is saying, and they just had to slash these jobs. They're also apparently moving a considerable amount of their manufacturing jobs to Mexico, and they've come under some heat for that. But this is a pretty you know, typical of what I've seen that the news is reporting. Now, one of the reasons I'm very interested in this is because there could be two or even three, four, five things happening here. And it piqued my interest because I'm really, really interested in agriculture and what's happening in the agriculture market and what's happening with food prices. Because you might be hearing like corn and soybean prices are down, but food prices, obviously, we all know at the grocery store, we're paying a lot of money. So what's going on here? So it just seems like, I don't know, maybe something's not adding up. But, um, you know, in the meantime, there's this whole other side story that's happening with John Deere. And, you know, I don't know, honestly, if a massive commodity farmer, like the person who's spending a lot of money at John Deere is ultimately going to boycott them over racial training or like gender training or, you know, supporting pride parades or something like that, because 
John Deere has such a monopoly on the market that I don't know if a lot of these big farmers, like, and I'm calling them a big farmer only meaning that they have these tractors that literally cost as much as a house and are, are farming huge tracts of land. I mean, we're talking like, um, you know, massive, massive amounts of land. If they're going to have another option besides a John Deere cedar, I, I don't, I don't know about that. And so it, 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 you know, it seems like I'm not sure that's what's happening, but there's this whole other side that the news is really not reporting, which I think is, is really interesting. So I'm going to show you all that. We're going to go down that, in, that rabbit hole in one second, because uh, it is fascinating not shocking, not shocking, but definitely fascinating. If you are listening to this and you're like, okay, we're going to be talking about food prices and the agriculture industry and what's having more layoffs. And you're thinking, Hey, I would like to diversify my savings because I don't, uh, I don't trust that the economy is going to be doing so well when I want to retire and you're interested in diversifying into precious metals. You can text Allison with one L to 989898. Birch Gold will give you everything you've ever wanted to know and more about what that will mean. There are a lot of people right now, like us, actually. I mean, one of the reasons that we are getting into small farming right now is to just be able to have a little bit more food security ourselves. So that's one way we're diversifying. But another way you can do that, a lot of people do, is to own physical gold and silver in a tax-sheltered retirement account. And that's what they do at Birch Gold. They will help you diversify an old IRA or 401k for no money out of pocket into an IRA that's in gold and silver. And so again, it's a great way to support the show too. You'll get your free no obligation info kit. They have been in business over two decades. They have many, many A plus ratings. Well, they have an A plus rating with a better business viewer, but many, many, many uh, positive five star reviews and other uh, ratings from happy customers. And uh, we'll, just help walk you through whether this is right for you. So again, Allison, A-L-I-S-O-N, text that to 989898. All right, let's uh, go back over to the next rabbit hole we're going to go down. So this came out from Robbie Starbuck. Um, oh man, let's, let's just, I just want to make sure I get the date right exactly because it's been like at least a month, I think. Uh, no, okay, almost, July 9th. And so... I'll just play you the beginning of it, but I just want to go through some of the stuff that he says here. It's time to expose John Deere. John Deere has been one of the most beloved brands by conservative farmers, but recently on CEO John May's watch, they've gone woke. Here's some of what we found. Funding a pride event for kids as young as three. Gender bread man training. They ask employees to list their preferred pronouns on all communications. Bill Gates is listed as their largest shareholder. John Deere celebrated their accounting and finance team taking United Way's 21-day United for Equity program. When I did a United for Equity program, it promoted Ibram Kendi, who we talked about on this show, the woke children's book, Annie Race's Baby, Awake to Woke to Work, a podcast on the concept of whiteness, woke activist Robin D'Angelo, bigotry against Christians who supposedly have Christian privilege and more. Um, they have LGBTQ and race-based identity groups at corporate and um, have a 95 of 100 CEI score from uh, the HRC. They just announced layoffs in the U.S. and they plan to ship large segments of production away from the U.S. to Mexico. And then he goes on to say that uh, that they've lost their you know, foundation, I guess, as like an American company and, and goes on. So um, here, let me, let me just show you exactly, like, I'll just show you the first minute of what he has to say here. And um, we'll go from there. Okay, here, here's Robbie Starbuck. You expose John Deere. As many of you know, we had a very big win recently with Tractor Supply, where we got them to drop all their woke policies. Well, I regret to inform you that John Deere, another company that relies on conservative customers, has also gone woke. This page you see behind me is their personal pronoun policy. They encourage employees to use pronouns in all communication. And I'm just warning you now, you're going to want to strap in because this is going to be a long video and in my opinion, much worse than Tractor Supply. But let's continue. This is an event that John Deere sponsored called Capital City Pride's Little Rainbow Run. It was for kids as young as three years old to engage in pride. And side note, I don't care if you're gay or straight, kids should not be celebrating what type of sex you like. It's weird, it's creepy. Here's a fun photo we found on LinkedIn. Yes, this is uh, John Deere employees being trained on the gender bread man. Yes, the gender bread man. If you're not familiar with that, it's the whole concept that basically gender is completely fluid. There's no such thing as your biological sex. You just are whatever you think you are. So much like Tractor Supply used to have, John 
Okay, so I won't bore you with any more, even though actually the video is somewhat interesting. So go check it out at Robbie Starbucks page. But, um, you know, essentially, you, you, he's making the argument that people need to boycott it. And, uh, you know, there have been reports of, I would say, like his like minded crowd that that has had an effect on John Deere. And whether it is or isn't, I, I obviously, I don't know a hundred percent, but I will say this, um, you know, I struggle with this one because on one hand, I am a real proponent of farming, like of us being able to feed our, <laughs> our citizenry here in the United States. And I do think there have been significant government policies that, um, have made this very difficult along with bad consumer choice, frankly, just consumers not caring about their food and deciding that they are going to give up responsibility for looking into their food. And then you have this just top heavy structure with a lot of food that really like, honestly, a lot of the food that John Deere tractors are producing like corn and soy is going to feed animals like cows that should not really be eating that food anyway. And they should really be grasslands and the cows should be on the grass. But so, you know, it, it's really complicated. And, and when you see, when you see a news channel like Fox news channel, for instance, report on a lot of this stuff, they don't dig into, they don't really dig into the problems with the food system right now and this corporatization of food. Okay. John Deere, uh, put this statement out. Let me just make sure I get the date right for you guys. July 16th. So this is another couple of weeks ago. Our customers trust and confidence in us are of the utmost importance to everyone at John Deere. We fully intend to earn it every day and in every way we can. And they go on to say how they, you know, they were founded 200 years ago and they're, they're really uh, proud of the legacy. They deeply value their more than 80,000 global employees. And so they will no longer based on ongoing conversations. They will no longer participate in or support external social or cultural awareness parades, festivals, or events. So they're getting out of that. They say the business resource groups will exclusively be focused on professional development, networking, mentoring, and supporting talent recruitment efforts. The auditing um, will happen of all company mandated training materials. So they're going to audit all company mandated training materials and policies to ensure the absence of socially motivated messages while being in compliance with federal, state, and local laws reaffirming within the business that the existence of diversity quotas and pronoun identification have never been and are not company policy. So apparently they're saying that's not company policy to do diversity quotas and pronoun identification. And they believe um, that a diverse workforce enables them to meet their customers' needs. So they will continue to track and advance the diversity of the organization. So that um, is still a talking point for them. I don't know. Very interesting. Not totally sure what uh, is completely going on there, but I do want to show you something else. Um, you know, like I said, this is an example of another mainstream news article. Over 300 salaried John Deere workers laid off in Illinois Quad Cities, and they have basically the talking points I've already read to them, and they say how many people were laid off, and that, um, you know, they have the statement from John Deere that that basically this reduction in product demand and increased operational costs have unfortunately forced us to make tough decisions, including layoffs at John Deere production facilities and reductions in our global salaried workers, uh, workforce. And so they're giving 12 month severance and they're giving prorated short-term incentive and long-term incentive cash compensation benefits, payment for any earned and unused vacation or paid time off, access to ongoing health and wellness benefits, and 12 months of professional job placement services. Not a terrible deal. Um, of course, the United Auto Workers are ripping them for corporate greed, saying that John Deere's mass layoffs follow $43 billion in stock buybacks, and essentially saying that um, the company is forecasted to make $7 billion in profit this year. CEO John May's total compensation for 2023 was $26.8 million. And they're just saying that the company is basically completely greedy. You know, I've always thought it's interesting when consumers boycott a company for food, a food company over like racism or pride parades instead of like the actual company's products. And, you know, John Deere is not a food company. It produces a you know, a machine for the production of food. But like, you know, if you take Chick-fil-A, for instance, 
there this was happening there a long time ago because oh everybody was so mad that the owners of Chick Fil A were um, you know against gay marriage and so everybody's like you know don't eat Chick Fil A because they're against gay marriage. Now it's flipped and now everyone's boycotting companies that are allegedly conservative because they don't have conservative policies. It's just, but it's the same dance, the same song and dance. And I remember when I was a reporter in Tampa and the whole Chick-fil-A stuff was going down, I, I was like, well, why isn't anybody boycotting Chick-fil-A? Because they're basically the same as McDonald's. I mean, maybe they close on Sundays and I don't know, maybe they're nicer, their employees or their bathrooms are cleaner. I'm not really sure. But like at the end of the day, it's still crap. I mean, I'm sorry if that offends you, but the food is terrible. It's bad for you. It's fast food. It's, um, you know, it's fried up and stuff that's going to make you sick. And it's factory farm chicken. And so, you know, you can support gay marriage or not. I'm still not going to eat it because it's bad for you. And so I feel like it's just funny to see people make decisions about food companies on like woke policy when like, where were you guys when, you know, the food system was tanking and you could have cared about food, like your local farmers and uh, regenerative farming. And it's it just funny to me, man. It, it, it cared about like just knowing a farmer. I mean, a lot of the farmers who are kind of the slaves, I guess, as you, you the corporate slaves of these big companies like Tyson, you know, they're like, almost like sharecropper farmers now um, subsidies of, of these massive corporations that pay them so little for all of their work. Like I bet a lot of them would love to get out of that model. It requires consumers to care enough about it that they're willing to do a little bit of extra legwork. So, you know, there is responsibility on the farmer. There's responsibility on the consumer. But my final thought on all of this is I always just think it is really funny when we get all up in arms about food companies or, you know, farming companies or whatever, based on stuff that literally like has nothing to do with the actual product. And, um, you know, why drink, uh, what was it? Bud light. I mean, I'm sorry, but like Bud Light's kind of gross. <laughs> drink an unfiltered beer. Hey, speaking of, um, like unfiltered and the way the way fermentation should actually happen. Let's talk about Allison wine promo. Okay. Cause if you're in the Allison wine club, then you're getting the world's best wine. And before I even go any further, well, actually, you know, let's talk about wine real fast. Allisonwinepromo.com. You're going to get six bottles of amazing wines, six bottles every three months. You'll always have a great bottle of wine to take with you to whatever cocktail party you're going to birthday presents, holidays, Christmas, whatever you can give it as a present with a note on it that says this supports Allison's channel. This supports Allison's work. This is a, a pro free speech wine. It's just, a, it all comes with a, like great stories and it's a great tasting wine. Cause you're going to learn all about the wines where they come from. These are like small family operations, handpicked grapes. You know, you'll see some of the stories of the people produce them. They're producing them like their families have for generations and some over 200 years. And uh, some of these are over 6,000 feet in altitude. So the grapes work very hard for your palate uh, as I work very hard for your intellectual palate here on the show. So if you're a wine drinker, you want to just make sure you always have a nice gift to bring and you want something that supports a good cause. AllisonWinePromo.com. You can always send me some mail. Love hearing from people. Hey, look, seeds. You can send me seeds. Somebody sent me seeds so I can grow my own food. I don't need to buy a John Deere tractor. I can grow it myself, hand sewn. Okay. Somebody sent me seeds. Sylvia, PO Box 3355, Danelle in Florida, 34432. Keep it kid friendly because the producers open them on the way home and we try to send everybody artwork. It just might take a few months. We're behind schedule on it. No layoffs here, though. No layoffs. We will get the mail to you. PO Box 3355, Danelle in Florida, 34432. So off Kurdish living. And we just posted a video about what it's like raising ducks versus chickens, all kinds of fun farm adventures. Uh, and we're just learning here. So if you're farm interested or you just like to watch me squirm with a bunch of animals, then you can go over to Off Gridish Living. Make sure you're subscribed. Appreciate all of you guys. Uh, thanks for everybody who's on the editorial board. Thanks for those who support the sponsors. There's plenty of sponsors in the link. Links in the pinned description or the description and pinned comment wherever you're watching this. So make sure to check those out. I'll see you guys next time.